<laughs> Hello and welcome to our TV. Oh, well, I try to do a bloody Facebook Live post. I hate Facebook Live. It never works. And then when you try and do it on a day like this, it just goes wrong again, apart from tripping over. <laughs> so here I am again. So uh, this is a, the normal way I do it, which is, which is with my um, HD camcorder. Um, so... <laughs> Well, what, what we're going to say, okay, let's just sit myself down here. Oh, so I've just dropped this camera on the floor as well. So it's not going too well today, but then it's not going too well for a lot of people. And um, I'm very lucky, um, as uh, if you are lucky, to be at home safe because this weather is pretty tough. So what's been going on today in the garden? Well, it really has been an amazing day and lots of you um, are posting that you're seeing these uh, Russian thrushes in the garden. And <laughs> now every time I think about a Russian thrush, I'm thinking about something different. <laughs> oh, I should never have said that earlier on in that live broadcast. Anyway, it's a bit late for that. Uh, it's done, it's gone, and you've seen it. So anyway, we'll get off that subject. I got uh, a few people that commented about when I was tickling the breast of a robin the last time I did a video diary. So it's, uh, it, I don't trust me, this is a family show, so uh, we shan't be going down that road very often. Um, let me just um, show you uh, how the garden is at the moment. Um, it really is quite dull here, in the sense there's not a lot of light um, and um, what I've been doing all through the day, I've literally, um, we were supposed to be in Devon this weekend, believe it or not, and we were travelling down to um, Newton Abbott this morning, and uh, obviously that wasn't going to happen, so we're home instead. So we took a walk up to the shops earlier, and as I mentioned uh, earlier um, in, in my very short live broadcast, is when I was in uh, the supermarket, I bought some fruit and um, Jackie and Emily thought I was actually buying fruit to have a nice fruit salad this evening <laughs> but no it's for the birds so what I've been doing is I've been sprinkling fruit onto the frozen pond um, simply because that part of the pond is not covered in deep snow because pretty much anything else I'm putting out is disappearing into the snow I mean the birds are finding it um, but uh, it still is much harder for them all day I've had field fairs in the hedges and as I'm now um, doing this I'm noticing that uh, some of them are flowing away and we also had a spectacle um, where I had, uh, let's just get myself back on camera again, had a spectacle where, uh, <laughs> try not to fall down, where the, um, uh, the we had loads of um, black-headed gulls uh, that, uh, that suddenly appeared in, over the garden and there was about uh, 20 of them. So uh, this weather is really, really um, sending these birds into different places to find food. Um, so anything could crop up in your garden. I would love to think that we could have um, some um, uh, wax wings in the garden, but uh, there's nothing left for the birds to eat because I've been wiped out by field fares. My barn owl has just suddenly decided to say hello. Hello. And she's wondering why I'm talking. How are you keeping? Because it's hard for barn owls. Really hard. In fact, maybe we'll just uh, do a little bit, um, just see if we can get into her aviary. Oh, I have to take her in some food area. The problem at the moment for these birds is that I'm trying to feed them, but the food, the food is freezing. There we are then. So this is a bit different, isn't it? So tell everybody how hard it is for a barn owl in these conditions. So she's just going to just ask her to just to... It's all right. So let's... Uh... Let's do a little, uh, something a bit different, shall we? Let's just zoom this out. Right then. Okay, so, look at me, not the camera. Excuse me, hello, hello. That's it. So, what we want to say, right. If you are a barn owl in snowy conditions, it's a problem, isn't it? Is it a problem for you? And the problem is, is that you can't get to the food that you need because if you look at the ground, the ground is covered in snow. The thing is, 
the voles are quite happy because the snow actually insulates their environment which is the rough grassland that where they live under the grass and so voles are very happy and actually um, when you have lots of snow on the ground for long periods the voles carry on feeding on the grass that's already there and they carry on breeding um, it's quite warm and they have a whale of a time and their populations can actually increase the problem is though birds like barn owls aren't getting as, as much food as they need. One of the things that somebody um, that I know used to do was sprinkle grain along the edge of, um, uh, of hedges and what, he, what that was doing was pulling out the wood mice from the hedges and then that gave the barn owls a little bit more opportunity to perhaps get some wood mice in their diet and bank voles and things like that uh, because the field voles which these birds are usually prioritizing in hunting uh, were just not available because of the snow cover. And the thing about barn owls is barn owls don't have very much fat reserve. So if you look at the actual size of a barn owl, so we can, oh right, darling, it's all right, it's a shy, a bit camera shy, aren't you? But they aren't actually very big birds. They're very, very, um, very thin birds. And you don't have um, very much fat, do you? Look at that, there's nothing there. Really is nothing there. So it's very important that, that she actually keeps her weight up. So, let's go on there, darling. There you go. That's it. So, and you're hungry, aren't you? I gave you some food earlier on, so this bird's hungry. So when we finish this, I'll get you another, another chick. And the problem this weather is that where I normally keep them, they're just freezing. So what I'm having to do with her, instead of giving her three on a night time, I'm feeding her occasionally during okay. the day. Now she is still quite insulated, so she's, uh, she's not cold as such, but she's not as cozy as the tawny owl. So we'll just uh, come back out of here. Be back with you in a second. Okay, so um, as I say, for barn owls is pretty tough. Now let's have a little look at the tawny owl in a second. Before I do that, we'll just have another look at what's going on on the pond. And straight away, I can see a field fair over there. And these birds are everywhere. Very attractive birds field fairs. As I said, they're from the thrush family. And uh, they really are lovely. Let's uh, have a, a look down and see how jazzed the tawny owl is getting on. Because tawny owls are a larger species. And because they're large and carry more fat, they have more survivability. So whereas a barn owl can only go for about three or four days without catching food, and male barn owls are smaller, males are smaller than females, so um, they're much more vulnerable. In, this, in these uh, conditions. And quite frankly, this weather that we're having now is going to kill a lot of barn owls. There's no question about it. So this particular winter is gonna have a lot of casualties. And in an average year, roughly, on average, 85% of the chicks that hatch out every spring will not survive. But actually this winter, that could be um, even greater. Um, so um, it really is something that can be a big problem. Now, as I'm talking to you, I'm hearing a great spotted woodpecker and it is just gone up into the tree. Now he's coming to feed on the woodpecker pole. He's up there somewhere, see if I can find him. <laughs> he's funny, there we go. He's there. Now what this woodpecker does, he plays peekaboo. See him? He's looking at me. He knows I'm here, but he's hungry. Oh, he's gone off again. And he disappears over to the trees, way over there. So there he is there in the, uh, in the trees. He's so funny how he plays peekaboo. He's hungry. And uh, that's why he's coming into the garden to go onto the woodpecker pole. Let's just go and see Jazz, my tawny owl, because we're talking about owl survivability in this weather. Um, and as you'll see from Jazz, <coughs> always got to say hello to her, because tawny's, she's very good, but um, oh, don't go in there. I don't want to be going in there. <laughs> this is the camera. So you're perfectly okay, aren't you? Because you're quite a large owl in the sense that you have quite good fat reserves. And if I put my hand under Jazz's um, inner body, she'll just <laughs> good kill. All right, darling. 
You're like, all right, there's you go. Now you're toasty warm, aren't you? There's a good girl. I'm just going to feel your, just going to feel under her. She really is warm. You're warmer than I am, aren't you? You're warmer than me. So you don't have a problem, you good girl. She really doesn't have a problem in keeping warm. Um, and that really is why uh, tawny owls um, in this weather can actually survive pretty well. It's not that some won't get affected by the cold. Um, and also, if you notice on her feet, I don't know if the camera's going to show this, because you'll be in very awkward. Can we get you out, please? And don't hurt my hand, because... Don't hurt my hand. Good girl. I've got no glove on. Out you come. Come on, then. Good girl. She's being very gentle. Come on then, you're going to come out. Come on. You're such a good girl, aren't you? Come on. Out you come. Good girl. There's a good girl. I want to see your feet. So, all right, that's a good girl. So if we look at her, her feet there, she has feathered feet. And this is just really giving her so much more warmth, isn't it? So the barn owl doesn't have that. And this is why tawnies, as I say, cope much better. And you're pretty cosy, aren't you, missus? So we'll leave you be. You're going to come out? Here you come then. Let's see if we can get it out into the aviary. Come on then. Out you come. Don't hurt me. Good girl. There's a good girl. Out you come then. Out you go. <laughs> All right then. Another owl that is camera shy aren't you? She's quite happy in here. She's got a shed and an outdoor area. Got to make sure that she keeps, um, she gets water as well because um, she'll need regular topping up. Okay, so what else can we talk about? Well, um, the Bumblebee House um, is, uh, this is the new design of Bumblebee House, which is a Arctic bumblebee house, as you can see, it's especially adapted for deep snow. Um, and there's unlikely to be anything in here. There you go, there's a peanut store in there. Um, so there's nothing in there. But I will just make the hole open there, just in case a mouse comes out. But quite frankly, in this deep snow, a mouse would be really stupid to, uh, to attempt. Uh, to come out because it just literally will just get lost and will get very cold so lots of animals are um, keeping out of the way although I have noticed that in my shed here where I keep the food I've been putting peanuts down there and I notice there's they're disappearing very quickly so there's mice living in there and if I was a mouse that's where I'd live because it's quite quite uh, quite cozy so I've been topping up the water in the water um, containers and yeah that's still there but it is getting very cold and freezing um, obviously the woodpecker pole is uh, charged with suet which the birds have been enjoying and um, I think probably as the day is moving on the, the there's less birds about around I mean they have been feeding here in the garden um, but um, we'll see if there's any anything going to take any food off my hand but it, you know the birds are just the behavior is changing as a result of this weather they're kind of bedding down really Let's see if anybody's around here come on then come on I can see Rennie and Rennie is in there Let's see if we can uh, connect with little Rennie for a little bird like a wren it really is important to carry on feeding keep feeding and the wren won't eat the fruit but it will have live mealworms um, and he has been around regularly and i've been trying to give him food to keep him uh, supplied with energy because when you're small you don't have a very big fuel tank bigger bird bigger fuel tank unfortunately the waterfall is given up now so there's no fresh water being provided there in the waterfall and um, once again I've this feeder here this water bowl uh, bath has been uh, charged with water so uh, and what I've been also doing is just 
keeping the snow off the food so the birds can see what's there. Some nice blackberries there for them. I can hear some sparrows up in there. There's our uh, grey wagtail again, just gone over there. And uh, very interesting how he's staying around the garden. He's been in the garden all day and he's he seems quite comfortable. I'm quite surprised really. But um, he's not been eating this. I mean, there's millworms on the pond, but he's not been really eating the millworms. Nobody's about. I mean, it comes and goes here. As I say, there were loads and loads of field fairs in the garden this morning. There's about 30 of them in the garden. They clean, cleaned up my um, crab apples. Where anyway, Rennie is. I'll just put those down there for Rennie. So I was kind of hoping this was going to be a, a video diary full of... Um, of birds to show you but actually <laughs> it's uh, what time it was it's about four o'clock now isn't it so um <clears throat> the day's moving on um i was earlier on when i went to get the fruit for the birds i was at waitress chip in sobbury and as we came out of the story store there was a peregrine falcon overhead and um Another scenario when you have all of these migrant birds gathering is that the predators, uh, like peregrines and sparrowhawks, um, are very aware of the flocks of birds around. And for them, suddenly, they've got all these birds. They are, they're not really... Um, they're always aware of predators. And I've noticed these um, field fairs that have been here um, have been... Um, uh, uh, keeping an eye on the, on the skies because they always have to um, but um, they don't know where the, the, the danger is going to come from unlike the birds that live in an area and they get used to where the predators normally hunt because all these birds have their habits as do predators they have a, um, a, a sort of a, an attack path shall we say um, so uh, a peregrine can do probably quite well um, eating a few Russians which uh, yeah won't get into that um, so <laughs> Forget that uh, Russian thrush thing, anyway. <laughs> so, um, is anybody in there? I wonder. Who knows? Who knows? But the I haven't seen any goldfinches. It's again. But this is what I was saying about in terms of my uh, crab apples. Now, I said about how in my bird feeding video how important it is to have um, fruit in your garden. And boy, oh boy, these birds. These, they, this was full of crab apples they weren't in very good condition they were getting a little bit old but look at this they've just stripped this crab apple tree bare and wow what a great thing that is um, because that's exactly what this tree is for this tree is there for wildlife um, so when as I mentioned in my bird feeding video when it when we have weather like this if you have lots of trees in your garden that produce fruit um, like um, uh, crab apples and like rowan um, and pyracantha, all those sorts of uh, things, you will find that um, in situations like this, you're the one that's going to get these birds in your garden. And in the one year, it might even be wax wings. Now, I'm talking to you here and just on the pond, just turn the camera on very slowly, there is a field fair. There's also a gull overhead and this field fair has come down for the apple. He's keeping one eye on me. There's one field fair, it might be this one, that is really, really territorial and any others come in the garden, he immediately goes over and chases him. So if you don't know what a field fair is, his chances are you're going to get one in your garden if you're putting out fruit for them. They have got these um, yellow beaks and grey heads. They've got like a rusty orangey yellow on their um, breast feathers. And they really are lovely looking birds. Um, and as I said, there was a lot of them um, in, the, uh, in the garden this morning. The pied wagtail thinks it's a kingfisher. That's your pied wagtail there. It's just amazing that these birds are just hanging around the whole time. Oh, there's another. You can hear these wet, these um, field fairs. So there's a few of them. There's one there. So it's surprising how they can be in your hedges and you don't even know it. But Again, although this hedge isn't really providing fruit, oh, that is that's a starling. 
That was the other bird that um, got a nice picture of a starling. I posted on my previous post. This starling has been um, in the garden. Starlings are just not in their numbers as they used to be. Uh, it's lovely to think that, again, just one bird is benefiting from the food that I'm putting out, as I'm sure you are. I would also like to say that I'd like to thank um, thank you for sharing my bird feeding video and thanks particularly to Steve England who's got a lot of connections and Steve very generously has shared it to some of the um, uh, groups that he's uh, belonged to and it really has um, been a massive help. Rich McDee, um, all of you that have shared, has over 50 shares um, and um, over a thousand views and I'm so pleased and wow what timing that was, unusual for me I know. Like I said earlier, I'm, I'm never the most organised person. But just to think that, you know, producing a simple video with simple information, which is simple but so effective and so important, that it's prompted lots of people to put food out for their birds. And I know that lots of you have had results as a result. So, you know, I'm thanking you and you can thank the birds and they're thanking you. It goes round in circles and you will get tremendous pleasure so um yeah there's two uh going backwards and forwards here two red wings over there now listen to that noise very noisy birds there is another thrush that comes over from eastern europe which is a red wing um, and um, it's quite possible that you might get redwing in your garden. It's a smaller thrush, and uh, as the name suggests, they've got um, red on them. You can Google to see what they look like. Um, but again, putting fruit in your garden can attract those. So I'm just going to sit here a second, and I'll uh, I might come back to you in a second and just see what uh, what else comes in the garden. Okay, okay. So welcome back, and. Um, not a lot happening, but uh, this blackbird has just come in, and uh, there's another regular bird around the garden. We've got uh, both the wagtails on the pond at the moment. There's guys there, but also we do have a field fair that's just flown in as well. And I've noticed the field fair have taken a bit of a liking to the mealworms. So there is apple on the garden, but... Uh, they do seem to like the mealworms. I think those ones down there might be dried mealworms. So that's another thing you could sprinkle on your on your garden if you can avoid them being covered by the snow. Aren't they pretty birds, field fairs? You'll notice his feet are disappearing into the ice because that pond has got slush on the surface. Off he goes. So, um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's really, um, you just never know what is going to fly in and start feeding in the garden. Um, and um, it really is a, it's, it's a, a difficult time for the birds when they've got all this snow on the garden. But it's also an exciting time for us because anything could appear because all the birds are moving into the areas where they can find food. And I've said before that um, our back gardens are becoming uh, the nature reserves of the country. Um, and um, I don't think... Uh, there's any doubt that in this weather, um, when we feed the birds like we do, there's no doubt that it really is helping to keep these birds alive, which is why they're here. So I'm going to finish this diary. I've rambled on again, um, but uh, thanks for watching Wild Owl TV. Um, and um, I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, little experience. It, this snow will be gone within a couple of days. So enjoy your field fairs while you, while you can, because it might be two or three, four years before you get them in the garden again, depending on what the weather does. And I'll just leave you with a shot of the garden as we finish the day, because the, it really is uh, getting quite dull now. And uh, as I may have mentioned in my live broadcast, I may have, I should have been in Devon today for a three night stay and it never happened. So I'm very happy to be spending my time in the garden. I'm just looking for a bird here. I've zoomed on something, I can't see it. Oh, there he is. God.
नहीं है क्या So there you have it. So thanks for watching Wild Our TV and I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you again. Okay, bye.